Oh, it's, it's going to be a long one, folks. Okay, Wilco, Cruel Country, album review, let's chat about it. Hey guys, what's going on? John here from What's Spinning, here tonight to chat about this latest album from Wilco. These guys, if you don't know, are Chicago, all country, indie rock, folk rock legend. And personally, I've always been a very big fan of their early days. I've always thought that... Honestly, AM goes underappreciated, being there is really nice, and I've always thought that Summer Teeth might be their best album, at least for my tastes. And while it's not my favorite, Sue Me, Yankee Hotel Foxtrot does deserve all the accolades it's gotten over the years. But like many others since then, I have had a very vicious back and forth with Wilco. Like 2004's A Ghost Is Born, wow! This is so boring. Like, I just re-listened to it last week. I still can find little to nothing about that I actually enjoy. Sky Blue Sky, in parts, is really beautiful and lush and well thought out, but it also is very low on energy. Now, I did think Wilco, the album, was a big leap in quality. I actually think it goes underrated. But while albums like The Whole Love were very experimental and full of twists and turns, I have a lot of issues with some of the directions it goes and just how unmemorable some of the material is. Then they came out with Star Wars and Schmilko. These are both albums that are just audible shrugs for me. They're in one ear, they're right out the other, they're fine while they're on, but I can't remember it still. It had Wilco taking less risks than usual and showing a little less energy too. Same thing for 2019's Ode to Joy. This album blew right past me without moving me at all. Now, a lot of things actually did interest me uh, leading up to this album. It, for, for one sake, it's a double album, 21 tracks, most of them recorded in a single take, which is very interesting. And I thought at least one of the singles was pretty good. So let's chat about this. Now, it goes without saying, there's a ton of material here. A lot of material here. This is the longest Wilco album in quite some time. I will say this, though. When they're on and really focused, they can work some magic and actually come out with some of their better tracks in a lot of years. This album starts off with I Am My Mother, and honestly, it's a really classy start. It's stripped down and warm, but it's also soulful and really passionate, especially compared to where they've been the last few years. Like, this is far from some heartless ballad. It's really sweet and tender and really emotional. It's the sort of rustic track that you would see at a Wilco live show that would really impress you. And honestly, it got me really hyped to listen to the rest of this album. I thought I was going to love it. This album's title track, Cruel Country, is really good too. This is just a really great, sort of dusty country blues track. It almost reminds me of what I loved about bands like Drive By Truckers in the early 2000s. It's just so exhausted. In the best possible way. I'm getting some like Grateful Dead, American Beauty era harmonies on here as well. On the other hand, The Empty Condor is a real left turn. It really does well too. There's a drama on this track that I haven't heard from Wilco in god ages. It's not the most eventful track, but it's all about the little details here, and they're really special. It did really stop me in my tracks, as a matter of fact. It's a little dark at times, too. It genuinely sounds like nothing else that they've done in a while. I have a lot of the same feelings on tonight's The Day. There's actually a lot of majesty and, once again, some drama around this track. I'm surprised at like a track like this, that this is even on the same recording sessions as the rest of this album. Once again, it's also nothing too jaw-dropping or new, but it is just masterfully performed folk rock with a ton of intrigue. I love how lyrically driven it is and the whimsical nature that we get here. It's really beautiful, honestly, and it just ends up sticking with you long after it's over. It's a great risk once again. Here, Wilco sound like skilled veterans that still have a ton to say, and I love that. Bird Without a Tail, Base of My Skull, on the other hand, this is oddly ambitious. Look, I saw a plus five minute track coming my way and I got worried, but this is a really intricate, practically progressive folk single that is lyrically driven, narrative driven, and really well performed. Not only that, but more importantly, Wilco just sounds so focused. This track is gorgeous. It is a warm, wintry folk track that, simply put, is really cool. 
But with all of this material, this album is lopsided. We get a lot of tracks like Hints that just do not move me. It's a very breezy, forgettable folk track. I mean, it's not the worst sin committed here, but nothing is memorable. I mean, as far as modern folk goes, if you put this on, I wouldn't be, you know, pissed or anything, but it really does nothing to stick with you. And trust me, it's far from the most emotional or rustic thing here. And I think Ambulance is the worst track here. This track is rough and really faceless. This sounds like a one-off cut from like a 70s cover compilation that Wilco did. It has no personality. It has no face to it. I mean, it's sweet, it's light, but it's soulless. Good luck remembering anything about this. All Across the World, on the other hand, sounds like every average tune or below average tune on like Star Wars or Schmilko. It's paint by numbers folk trying to be super quaint and super likable but flopping so hard. And Darkness is Cheap sounds like it's gonna fall apart at any moment. It's so fragile and small sounding and not in a cute folk rock kind of way because that can work. It's just really pathetic. Tired of taking it out on you? I haven't cared about this track since it dropped as a single. I mean if you want a nap this might put you to sleep but that's about it. Like, trust me, when the energy on this album evens out or, you know, goes a little bit lower, things get rough really fast, the universe isn't much better. This sounds like it was pulling teeth for Wilco to record. And yes, there are moments, brief moments, where the sort of, you know, on-the-moment recording kind of sounds cool and rustic and rugged. But the rest of this track is bored and most certainly not fun. I mean, halfway through the album, I thought I was really going to hate the rest of this thing, but Wilco do have a way of surprising me. There's some real risks taken in the second half of this album. Take, for example, Many Worlds. Where did this come from? We are over halfway through this hour and 16 minute long album, and somehow, someway, Wilco break out a near eight minute cosmic folk jam. Yes, this is a jam, but it comes off genuinely weird, completely experimental, very trippy and really far out at some points, but almost always really gorgeous. Where'd this even come from? In its eight minute runtime, it's never really boring or overstaying its welcome. It's meditative, it is hypnotic and completely compelling. For a no frills folk ballad that really is captures your heart really quick, look no further than Heart is Hard to Find. This is the performance that was missing from some of those earlier misfires. Jeff's vocals alone on this track might be his best work here. It's so classy and well done. Wilco is really full of surprises on this album. Falling Apart right now, I've enjoyed since it was dropped as a single. It's upbeat, it's probably the most rowdy and raucous thing here. But it's really classy, it's genuinely bluesy, and once again, that Grateful Dead American Beauty vibe is strong here. And I hear tracks like Please Be Wrong, and I think of the earlier faceless folk ballads that were getting on my nerves, and I get even more upset because this is so simple, yet absolutely stunning. It's so warm, and like I said, it just feels like it came to them so easily. A Lifetime to Find is really classy too. This is an upbeat, sort of bluegrass inspired alt country jam, and it comes off really well. It's breezy, it's sweet on the ears. If you're looking for harmonies, look no further. And yes, have they done this sound much better in the past? Certainly, arguably. But for a modern take in this vein from Wilco, I'm for this. And Mystery Binds, not for nothing, this is like my perfect track from Wilco. It's not too flashy, it's super dramatic, it sounds like a really great B-side from Yankee Hotel Foxtrot. The dreary riff, the quiet instrumental Jeff's very hushed, quiet vocals, this is really cool. Yeah, like I said, this album is actually full of surprises, for better and for worse. Like, Story to Tell starts rounding off the album, but this sounds like a track that Jeff Tweedy wrote ten times, got rejected nine times, and throw on here. Is it the worst track here? Probably not, but it certainly didn't rub me either way. It's very forgettable. And the cliches by the end of the track are really tough to swallow. As things roll on, things just get more bland with country song upside down. Jeff put zero effort into this. Zero. No, as a matter of fact, this doesn't even sound like a Wilco track. This sounds like a really sad and depressing Jeff Tweedy solo track. It's rough, even with the backing instrumentations. Sad kind of way, 
more like sad state of affairs. This track is just more of the same. It, it reminds me of like the worst tracks on Star Wars. It doesn't show me anything different, anything moderately progressive even. It sounds like where the band's been for 10 years and that just isn't cutting it for me. And I feel a lot of the same way on The Planes. You may like this track, but this shows to me nothing new. This sounds like it's everything else that they've been doing for the last 15 years and not even the best material on those albums. I could say that about a lot of this album. This track is 21 tracks long and granted 10 or 11 of them are, might be the best material Wilco's put out in a really long time. Those other 10 or 11 tracks, trust me, are some of the most faceless and unmoving tracks that I've heard from Wilco in a really long time. It's such a lopsided album. And hearing just the amount of good material on here, I was expecting to give this at least a decent review, but there's so much here. And so much of it should have been left on the shelf and never seen the light of day. I want to love this album. I want to even like this album. But so much of this album, too much of this album, just puts me off. Ah, feeling a strong five on this album, but let me know what you guys think down below. If you like the video, be sure to give us a like, give us a subscribe, and let me know down below what you would like for me to chat about in the future. And until next time, have a great day, guys.